Miss Rose Pilgrim Gnome, and she goes along with Jasper, the Pilgrim Gnome we made the other day. And he is not here, but this, he is similar to this. This was the first one I made. Um, I have him um, somewhere else in the house. So I'm gonna show you how I made Miss Rose, and I will show you how I did her dress. Her body and her legs are the same as I did on Jasper. And so let's get started. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to join my crafting community and click on that subscribe button and hit that bell. And when you click on the bell, that will notify you each time I upload a new video. If you already have subscribed, thank you very much for subscribing and for joining my crafting community. I appreciate it so, so much. And if you like the content, click on the like button. And if you have any comments, um, anything, just let me know. Leave them in the comments below. Um, I will leave uh, what I used and um, if there's any patterns in the description box below. So let's get started and make Miss Rose. Okay, so let's get going on Miss Rose. I already have the body stuffed. I have a piece of cardboard in the bottom. I have the rice and then I have stuffing. I try not to overstuff it so she didn't get really huge. And I'm using muslin because I want it to just kind of look natural underneath for her body and her legs. Okay. So I'm actually going to take a little, some of that stuffing out. And because we're going to need part of this sock for to attach her head. And I'm going to use um, part, this is like part of a styrofoam cone, but you could use a styrofoam ball. You could just um, make a circle of fabric and stuff it and gather it up and sew it shut and do that. Um, I've seen where some people have used tin foil and you can mold that into a ball. And then that's what is going to be her hair is going to cover the whole part of the cone or whatever so it's all going to be covered so you're not going to see what's under there okay so we're going to do so like i said there's the the cardboard piece your rice and your stuffing and i'm using muslin and then i'm using a cotton like a quilting fabric for her dress her apron and her hat so let's get our thread here so we can tie it off. If I can find my end. And then we're going to double. I usually double it. So we have enough. You need a long piece so you have enough to wrap around like I do all my gnomes. And we're going to gather this up. And then I'm going to we're going to attach her legs the same way I did with Jasper. So then I try to grab all of those ends and then wrap your thread around. So you're going to wrap it around like this. Hopefully you can see it because it matches. And you're going to take one end, wrap it to the back, wrap it to, it should be around to the back. This is how I do all my gnomes. If you if you watched my videos, I do it all the same every time. So then you're going to pull that tight and I'm just going to do, I'm not going to tie a knot yet, I'm going to cinch it up and I'm just going to make sure I have all my gathers and if her body is this, the size that I want it. So it looks good. So now I'm going to knot it and I always try to knot it in the back so where the heel protrudes out to the sock is the head for me the front so now we can cut some of this off and then i do the surgeon's knot which is three loops and then you tighten it and then i do just a regular knot after that i very seldom use rubber bands if I do, I usually wrap string around that so that it, if it does break, that there's something else to hold it. So then I take and I kind of 
spread my gathers out a little bit so they're not all totally bunched up. Make sure everything is pulled up, that there isn't any gathers that um, didn't get tied off. Then cut off the excess. And we're going to end up taking almost all of this out, the stuffing. And I'm just going to poke it down inside of the body. Because this is going to get shoved up in her hat. And I'm going to use a rubber band to tie this off and then I'm going to use some crochet thread to hold it just in case. So we're gonna, ah, and my whole thing just came undone. Oh my gosh. Well now we gotta start all over. I don't know what I did if I, from doing the rubber band where my string came undone. Okay. Now, I'll be right back because I need to get another piece of muslin. So I will be right back. Okay, I'm back. So now we're going to do this all over again. <laughs> I don't, I'm not sure even what I did. I'll watch the video and see if I, it was because of taking the stuffing out. So you're going to gather this all up. Let's see, you gotta get it so it's in the middle. And I need my thread. So then I have it where I have the back of the head, the front of the head is pointing down. And take your thread, put it over so it's looped over the back. And then take one end, bring it to the back. Take the other end and bring it to the back. And I'm going to work that thread down a little bit. And then I'm going to tighten it. To, oh, it's going to get away from me. And now I'm going to work my gathers again. And this isn't too important, but I still like to do it because this one is not going to really be seen. So let's try this all over again. I think I got her a little chubby on the bottom. So now we're going to cut this excess off. And now we're going to try this again. So I am just really not sure what I did. Okay, so let's try again. I'm just kind of watching it to make sure it's not going to pop out again. grabbing a nose so we're gonna cut some of this off and then we're gonna tie 
some thread around that rubber band just in case because they do dry out so wrap it around a couple few times tighten it and then tie a knot and I've made her shoes and I will link that is the same way I did Jasper's so I will link that video below so I'm not going to go through that all over again since it is in the other video. But those are her shoes. And we're going to take and I have to see. So we So I'm just going to fold this up for her. I'm going to get stuff out of the way for the bottom of her her um, pants, the her legs, because on this one I did different shoes where they were tucked, it was tucked in. So, and I'm not doing that this time. So I'm just gonna fold that and I'm gonna do the same to the other one. And then I'm just gonna quickly do a machine stitch So I'm going to machine stitch across here and across this other. This is the bottom hem of her pants. So let me do that. And you could hand sew that too if you wanted to sew this or hot glue. It's going to get a little stiff, but if you wanted to, that's up to you. Give me just a minute here. Okay, so I sewed these two and cut all my threads. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do right sides together and I'm going to run a stitch up this here's folded. I'm going to run a stitch up here, leave that open. So we're going to fold it in half. And if you want to hot glue it, that's fine. You're going to, if you're going to hot glue it, you're going to go right along the edge and you're going to fold it over and press it and let it dry very, 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 very good. Or really, really, really good. So I'm going to take and fold this in half and I'm going to do a stitch. All the way up here, leave this open, leave both ends open. So I just prefer to machine stitch when I can. And if I want something maybe a little decorative, I'll show you on her apron that I will hand sew it or just do a rough hand stitch. Okay, so I sewed that shut. And I just wanted a nice hem because I don't have a shoe to tuck her pants in like my other one the other shoes I did so you could do I mean I have many videos or in some of my known videos how I did different shoes um, there's a couple of videos that are specific to gnome shoes so I'm gonna cut all my threads off we're gonna turn these right side out so we need to get these on before we put her legs in here. Just like we did with Jasper, we're just going to take a, I used a box cutter or you can use, I'd use a box cutter first because I got to get through the fabric and the cardboard. Let's make a little slit and we're going to put these in here and hot glue them in here. So that's a very easy way for you guys to make standing gnomes. So now we're just going to take 
and we're going to slip that over and we're going to glue it down on the bottom down here and then this here is going to get tucked in so that when we glue it underneath like right there this will all be finished off you won't have any raw edges okay so I preferred to use a on rows I preferred to, I preferred to use a cotton fabric instead of fleece so tuck these just fold these raw edges down in Sometimes I used to like to use my scissor because it just grips, grabs it a little bit better. Okay, so now we're going to try to be very careful. Let me grab my glue gun. Let me get you guys close enough so you can see how I'm going to glue her pants or her little legs. So I'm going to try to, I'm going to fold this up, fold that bottom hem up a little bit, and I'm going to go right around the bottom of this shoe and try to go kind of close to that dowel rod because the pants leg isn't really huge and then you're going to take and fold that down or however it works for you because I'm having a hard time getting a hold of it and I was looking for So maybe if you just don't fold it up and scoot it, because my glue is already drying. Okay, we're going to do that different, because I have to glue it again. So just scoot your leg, your pants leg up. And then push it down. And then pull it over that glue and then press it in place. Okay, so that worked out better. Make sure our ends stay, stay tucked in. Okay, so let's do that again. So we're gonna pull her pants leg up. Make sure you keep the seam in the back of the shoe. Just put a little bit of glue around on that fleece close to the dull rod and let her pants leg go down And I'm trying to get my fabric in there over. And then just press that down. If you get a little bit of glue on your fleece, if you're really careful, you can trim it off. I got a little bit over here and some of this fleece I bought in lately is like really thick okay so there's her legs and now we're going to make our slits let me back you up a little bit because I want to make sure that you're not you're good okay so I'm going to take and you could use a knife or whatever. So I'm going to take uh, a box cutter and I'm going to go two slits. And I'm just going to kind of line this up and see. So I'm just going to do them right here. Make sure I get the front. So kind of in the middle, just going to poke it through. And some of that rice might want to come out. So. And then you can take your scissors if you have to get in there and make the hole. Just twist your scissors and then put your glue gun right in there. I need a glue stick. And then squirt some glue in that hole and then you have to be ready to put your 
leg in there. And make sure your pants leg is down and then get her foot on the right way. And then get that leg in there. And then you want to hurry up and do the other one because we have to adjust these to make sure that they are going to be the same height and that she's going to be able to stand. Okay, so we're going to let that dry and then we will do our pants. So while that's drying, we can put her nose on. Actually, nope, we're gonna wait with her nose. So her dress, what I did with her dress, I'm gonna put her aside. And let me get some of my stuff out of the way. And I'm just gonna back you guys up a little bit. Okay, so I just took a rectangle piece of fabric and it's nine inches by 14 and because I didn't want to sew a hem I ripped it so that is a very easy way I did the same thing with her arms there's one and with her arms her arms were about three inches by six and I'll leave that all below and I'm gonna write this down right now so I don't forget so give me just a second arms three by six and her dress was nine by fourteen okay just so I don't forget so I just ripped the fabric and all you have to do to rip your fabric is just make a little slit with the scissors and I'm going to try to find a piece on here. Let me get my glue gun out of the way. So like right here. So I'm just going to cut this piece actually. Well here. So I just cut it. All you gotta do is pull it. And then if you want another piece, a little slit and pull it where you cut it. And then if you want that fringe, then you have to sit and pick out the, the thread. So that's how you get that fringe and then you won't have to hem it. So a very easy way you can use it for the bottom of the dress is what I did. And it's not going to really matter up by her collar. And you can use it on the end of her arms, but we're going to cover that up with um, ribbon. And so I sewed. So I just made um, a tube with the dress and sewed a seam. So you can hand sew that. You could hot glue it if you wanted to. And so let's see, she should be dry. So let's take and glue her pants, uh, her legs up. So we're going to take, pull her pants leg down and you're gonna put glue around that dull rod. So let me, we're gonna do one leg at a time, I'll show you. So you're going to do glue just like that and then carefully bring her pants leg down and those raw edges are tucked in and then fix it so that that gets all the way glued down press it down and if you have to lift it up to get the glue in there just do that and then press it down And now we're going to do the same to the other one. You're going to put glue around that dowel rod 
The other pants leg is probably away in the way a little bit, but that's okay. And then bring that down. And if you need, if you don't want to make, if you want to make sure you don't touch the glue, you can use like a skewer or popsicle stick or something. And then we can let that sit. And her seams are in the back of her pants or back of her legs. She's got lint all over her shoes. So there's that. Okay, so for her dress, and I'm not sure, I it was hard to measure the length of her dress because I didn't know how tall she was going to be. So that's going to be up to you guys. I'm not going to be able to, if you need it longer, you're just going to have to cut your dress longer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some um, embroidery floss, and I'm going to tie a knot. And I'm just going to do a big running stitch so that I can gather this by her neck. And actually, I'm going to start in the back by the seam. And it's going to get covered up. I'm going to do a I'm going to do a different collar on this one. I'm going to use a doily. So I'm kind of going probably a good half inch down, but it's really going to depend on how tall your gnome is. If you have to cut your fabric or if you rip it shorter, if you have to make it longer, I would make it longer to start with or wait till you get um, your the, the legs and stuff on so then you can kind of measure it. But if you rip it, you don't have to hem it. So that's one easy way to um, get away from doing all that extra um, sewing and stuff. Okay, so now I have this all the way back to the back. I got it knotted up here. And so I got to bring her up. I want to bring this around where her neck is going to be because this is going to be where her head is going to sit is right here so the seam of her dress is going to go in the back and i gotta get rid of my needle and i shouldn't have cut my thread off So she's a little fatter than my other one. I wish you, I wouldn't have stuffed her so much. And now I gotta put my needle back in because I gotta knot this off. So don't cut, when you knot your thread off in the be with this, don't cut your end of your thread off. Then you can tie them together and tighten it up. And I should have not done that. And I'm trying to get my needle threaded. Okay, so I'm just going to take and knot this off in the back. Tighten it up. Just pull up a loop and then I'm going to go through that loop with my thread. I'll do it one more time. And this is not going to be seen. And her dress could have probably been a little bit wider at the bottom. So it flared out maybe a little bit more. And her arms, let's see, I need some beads. So I just, I ripped her fabric, so I got a fringe. And I have two, I lost my turning stick. Um, I have to turn this right side out. And after I get her hand in, I'm gonna use a bead, I'll do some ribbon. 
And you could just tie, if you wanted to tie um, like some ribbon around her wrist, you could do that. But I like the ribbon. And you could hot glue her sleeves if you wanted. So I'm going to take a bead, and this is not going to stretch for me, so hopefully it's big enough. And it is going to just go in there. So I have to get this. I'm going to have to cut some of my seams kind of in my way. So I'm going to put some glue in here. And then try to get my bead in there and hide the holes of the bead. So you kind of got to work fast because that glue is going to dry. And if you need to put your glue gun in there and add some glue, you can do that because that's what I need to do. Okay, so now we're going to do the other one. Like I like I said, you could I use the cotton fabric, the like quilting. But you can use fleece if you want to do it in the same kind you did Jasper. That would be okay. And I'm trying not to get my sleeves stuck together. Okay, that didn't work out very good. My glue got all stuck together. So I'm going to cut that off and I'm going to use the other end because what is there is going to get covered up by the ribbon. So I'm going to put, see if I can do this. So now I got glue on my bead. If you wanted to do different hands for her, you could do that. Okay, this one's being difficult. And I'm going to cut some of that off. Okay. That was a little bit more difficult than it should have been. So I'm just going to cut that off so you can kind of see her bead. And these are going to get glued right up here. And I got to see. So we're going to cut them a little bit because they're kind of long. Make sure you cut them both the same, and we want the seams in the back. So, but before we do that, let's get the ribbon on her cuffs. So I'm just gonna put, I'm gonna put it right on the material. And you don't need a very big piece, so I'm going to cut mine. And just wrap that around. And you can do it like that. Okay. So let me do the other one. 
So I just start out, I put the glue on the sleeve by the hand and then get it started. And then I put it on the B on the ribbon. Then make sure you really glue down that end so it isn't going to lift. So there we have both of her arms. So now you're going to glue it. I really think her dress is too long. So I'm going to take and tuck this under and see if I can pull it up a little bit. Because right now I'm not liking it. I think once I get her head and stuff on there. Okay, so let's get her sleeves on. We'll just glue these on. I put a little bit of glue inside the sleeve and the seam is gonna go to the back. Of the body. And you're gonna glue it right alongside right up here right alongside of her head. So when you make your dress, make it flared out a little bit more. Um, don't make a straight tube. Or just, yeah, it because to me right now I'm, I'm really not liking this. But we'll see when we get her apron on. So um let's do her head and i have just a styrofoam cone i've hollowed it out and i'm just going to glue it on here so i'm going to put glue in here And then get that on there and press it down and hold it because it's going to want to pop up. So wait to do her nose until you get her head on. Okay, so we're going to let that sit. And I'll show you her apron. So the apron is just a rectangle piece of fabric. And I sewed the sides and I used the material I just happened to get. Happened to have that fringe. So I used that to my advantage on the bottom of her apron. And then I sewed the seams on the side with the machine. And then I just did a gather here so I could um, gather that up so I could tighten it up so it wasn't straight. And that is going to go on her. And I used ribbon. I, you can hot glue that ribbon on or you can sew it. I sewed it. And then I'm just going to tie this. I'm just going to tie it in a knot. And I'm going to try to get it up a little bit more.
Okay, so there's that. And now we're going to do her hair. Ah, let's get her nose on. We're going to put her nose. Um, yeah, because I have to know, I have to know where to put the hair and stuff. So we're going to tie that right in the front and wrap it around the back. Come around the front and then go back to the back. I'm going to lay her down. So you just kind of have to be mindful when you're stuffing her sock to how much you're stuffing if you want to smaller thinner don't stuff it so much okay so now I have to cut a piece of of fur for her head and this is going to depend on how big your head is to how much you need you just want it to wrap all the way around and cover if you're using a styrofoam ball, if you're using a part of a cone, you could, if you wanted to stuff the whole top of the sock and do that, you could do that too. And then just wrap the hair, glue the hair around the, the fur around the sock. So I'm going to see if I need to have too much or too little. So I'm going to glue it and it's going to go right all the way around. Okay. And I need to cut a little bit off here. And my fur, the it's going to go up. I'm not going to have it going down. So I want her fur to go up like this, not down. You can do it if you want to go down, but I'm going to do it up. So I'm going to get some glue and I'm going to go, try not to get it on her nose. So hold the nose out of the way and get that fur, try to find the middle and then put it right on top of that nose. So I have it right up next to the nose. Okay. And then wherever you've got the glue, get the fur down there. And if there's any of this showing, it'll probably get covered up by her shawl or her um, little collar that I'm going to put on there. So then take and add more glue to the styrofoam cone. And get that glued on. Make sure everything is going to be hid. And then I need to cut a little bit shorter here because it's too long. I mean, I can just overlap it, but. So this is kind of how I did uh, Grandma Ellie, her hair. So push that all on. And then you're going to take and make sure you get glue on top and that you have enough for enough hair or fur to cover this top part. And I just squeeze that all together and make sure everything is glued down this back seam where those two parts meet. And I got a piece of glue.
So there's her hair. We're going to fix her nose. And then her collar. I have some doilies. And I'm going to see which one I like. So we're going to do that one. That looks cute. And we're just going to take... Um, let's see what thread I have. We will do some green just like I did because I did um green on her shoes. And I think I can just get this through without having to thread a needle. So I'm just going to go through the holes in the doily and then go from one side to the other. And then we'll tie a bow. So let me get this adjusted here so that I can... And you might want to put some glue on her nose, which I think I'm going to do after I get this tied. So I'm just going to tie this in a bow. I'm going to tie a knot first so that I can keep it tight. And then I will show you. And if you want to put a little bit of glue on the bow, on the knot, so it stays, you can do that. And now I'm going to take her nose and kind of try to tuck it underneath here and get some glue. And then just... Glue that down. Try to get your bow out of the way. Maybe do your nose first. And you just have to hold that down. Okay? So we have her shawl on. I just wrapped it around the back. Put some crochet thread. We got her... Apron on and her hat. So we are going to redo Rose's hat because what I did was not working out and I had to cut a bigger circle. It was not fitting. She's got a big head. <laughs> okay, so we're going to take uh, a bigger circle and we're gonna, I'm going to see how this one works. This is about a 11 inch diameter circle. You're going to take some thread and I knotted one end. Don't cut off your tail. And you're going to just fold your edge. Let me get you a little closer. So you're going to go fold your edge over. The right side is facing down. And you're just going to do a running stitch. And as you push your fabric on to your needle... You're going to very slowly fold the edge over. And just go all the way around like that. And then you get so much on your needle, pull it off. So you kind of got to work very carefully because we don't want any of the raw edge showing on the bottom of this hat and you want to do bigger stitches because we have to pull this and gather this up so it fits on her head so I'm Folding it over 
as I'm folding this edge over as I'm working my way around. We'll keep going all the way around. So you have to take the bigger stitches so you can gather. If you do tight stitches, it's going to you're it's going to be really hard to pull up and gather this. Got thread. Okay, so we're almost back to the beginning. And then I started with my knot on the wrong side. This is the right side right here. So the folded edge is the wrong side. And then come up right next to where you ended off, right there. Okay. So now you can pull it up so it gathers. And then we're going to try it on her head and see how it fits. Hopefully it's not too big. Okay, that's a lot better. So now what we're going to do is we're going to tie these knots. We're going to figure out how big we need this to be or how small so it fits on her head. Okay, so right about like that. I'm probably going to loosen it up just a little. And then you're going to tie these two together. So that will secure the gathers. And then you can cut those off. Don't cut too close to the knot because it's not going to be seen. And then I made this little brim. So what I did was I used the fringe from the fabric, the edge of the salvage, and I folded that over so my raw edge is in there. And then I just took scissors and rounded this edge. Um, I'm not too worried about it fraying, so I'm just going to leave it. I'm not going to sew it. You can buy fray check and put that on there and that will help. So you're going to find that knot is going to be the back of her hat. So you're going to find the middle of this brim and where you want this to be. So we're going to, let me think about how I got to sew this on. Okay, so you're going to sew, find like the middle. I guess it doesn't really matter because once you put it on and you'll be able to adjust it so um so you're going to put it on with this edge here that's we folded over on the right side so you want both of these right sides together like that so this is wrong side when we sew this on on here it's going to flip over like that so we're going to sew right sides together. Both of these hems are going to be next to each other. So let me get, I'm going to pin this. And then you're going to want to make sure that when you sew it, that you're going to sew. Let's see, let's get, we got to get some gathers up here in the front. So you're going to want to make sure that you hide, that you go sew below that gather stitch. So you're going to go, you're going to sew down further. So we'll put some pins in so we can get the this on. I just had to stop the video because I wasn't liking the way her hat was turning out and it was too small for her head. So I had to take a break and come up with another way to do it. So now you're going to take your thread and you're going to 
knot. If you want to do it like we do where we leave not one end and not the other. So if you make a mistake, you can pull out it a lot easier. This is a little bit thinner crochet thread than I've had before. So we're going to start, we're going to start on the underneath side of the hat. And then here's where you're going to take some smaller stitches. If I can get it started. Okay, let me make sure you guys can see. Bring it a little closer. Okay, so we're sewing right by that edge. And I gotta remember, I gotta go a little further away because of the thread we want to hide. It's hard because I'm going through like four layers of fabric with everything being folded. And now I'm going through all these gathers. So when you're buying fabric, if you look and see if it's got like a little fringe, you can use that to your advantage. Keep you from doing a lot of hemming. Or you can fringe it yourself like I showed you. If it's cotton, you can't fringe fleece. Okay, so we're almost done. It takes a little bit to go through all this fabric. Okay, so now we're to the other side. We're just going to make sure we get all the way down to that edge. And I'm going to show you when we get done here. So you're going to end out on the back of the hat there. And just take a stitch up. I'm just going to take right up by one of the gathers. Take a loop. And then go through that loop a couple of times. So it'll knot it off. And I'll do that one more time. And then cut your thread. And cut the other one. And we'll put some ribbon. I'm just going to hot glue some ribbon on so we can tie it. So let's try it. So we're going to flip. This is how we sewed it. So I sewed from this edge here all the way and we want it right sides together and then this is going to flip down and be her little brim. Just like that. Okay. So we just had to sew it once. You don't have to sew this and then sew it again because you're going to sew when you flip this, this one over, you're going to sew it down when you sew it to the hat. Okay. Okay, so let's figure out where we want her. So we want her ties right here by the edge of the brim. And I'm just going to hot glue them on. I could have sewed them. You can sew them in if that now that you know where I'm going to put them. You can sew them in when you sew the brim on. Oops, and then put the ribbon going the right way. You want the ribbon going outside the hat, not on the inside. And then you're going to let that dry really good before you start yanking on it. And then do the other one.
Okay, so we have to let that dry. And let's see, I think we have her all done except for her hat. So let me clean up while those ribbons dry. If you guys have any questions um, on what I did, uh, some of the measurements are hard because I don't know how tall you're going to make your gnome. I don't know how big you're going to make her. So um, just feel free to message, uh, send me a, uh, a comment and I answer all my comments. Yeah. Okay, so here is Miss Rose. She's all done. And I had to redo her hat because it was just a little too small. Um, so I took the hat with this edge here and I just tucked it inside the hat. So it's up in here. So that brim comes down over her hat, her face a little bit more. And then I tied the bow on the side there. So if you guys have any questions, any thing on what I used, how I did something, what I used, uh, measurements, I will try to get you measurements, but it's hard with her dress um, and stuff like that because I don't know how tall you guys are going to make yours, but just leave me a comment and I answer all my comments. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to join my crafting community and click that subscribe button and when you click on the bell, that will notify you when I um, upload new videos. If you already have subscribed to my channel, thank you for supporting me and joining my crafting community. And um, if you like what you see and like my content, click that like button and that will help my channel to grow. I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.